Maxi Bernstein. So long from Austin. Now to Houston. Welcome to Houston, everybody. John Shambi, Fran Priscilla, and Chris Budden. It's the number 14 ranked Kansas Jayhawks and the number one team of the country, the Houston Cougars, at home. Houston has secured the one seed in the Big 12 tournament. Shed a little short on that shot. As importantly, John, they are the Big 12 champions. They will not share that title this year. Murphy at the basket, a little bit short. Offensive rebound. Nope. Knocked away, out of bounds, and it'll be Kansas basketball. Welcome to Houston, everybody, and a sonic blockbuster between Kansas and Houston. This feels like a Big 12 championship game. Flips it inside, McCullough gets the double team. Dickinson, open shot. That one fall, and the rebound pulled down by Roberts. Kansas is playing for something as well. With a win and some help, they would secure the four seed. Why is that significant? Because it's a bye to the quarterfinals. If not, then it's four games in four days, as Francis throws it down again. Great start for Houston. And no hangover from the championship. Murphy. Now the freshman cold here in the early going. 9-2 Houston. Shed controls the game. Like a conductor at Symphony Hall. Shed inside, a little bit strong, was contested. Wanted a foul from Brett Smith. Adams inside, Hanks couldn't hit, but he is fouled. KJ Adams will shoot two when we return. It is Houston by seven. ESPN's exclusive. So you're able to focus and play ball and not be sitting here wiping away tears for them. Well, they're off to a fast start in this one. You're watching a sonic blockbuster. It's Kansas and Houston from the Fertitta Center. As KJ Adams knocks down the free throw. John Chomby, Fran Priscilla, Chris Budden for this final regular season matchup between these two who knows they could hook up in Kansas City oh yeah they might hook up another time after that this is the winningest senior class in Kelvin Sampson's 10 years Roberts and Shed John those two guys are culture warriors prior to Baylor transfer looking for space gets it to Shed Pulls up a little bit short. That one's tipped out of bounds or tipped to the side. And the foul will be on uh, Kansas. And, and he, they get it on McCuller. And John, let's talk about the three injuries that uh, Houston suffered this year. Almost all of them season ending. Ramon Walker may be back. No Joe Tugler, no Terrence Arsenault. Number two, Cedric Watt has played very little this year. The red shirt freshman in the lineup right now, up front. Lot on the floor, Cryer, pull up, got it. He's a guy that can get his own shot. And he can knock down the jumper, whether it's off the bounce or off the pass. And by the way, he loves playing against Kansas. 20 points a game, last three outings. Timberlake into the game for Kansas, a guy that they got from Towson to be their shooter. He's coming off a really good game. That shot off the mark, but Adams with the rebound. Fans wanted to travel. Timberlake at 18 in the win against Kansas State. McCuller. And Kansas is cold here in the early going. Jayhawks 0 for 4 from 3. Yeah, that's because Houston taking away the paint right now. Oh, that was halfway down for L.J. Cryer. And then rattled out 
John, he had 21 in the second half in Allen Fieldhouse. So Kansas very well aware of him. That one tip. Jeb Harton is Brett Smith. And it'll be Houston basketball. And KJ Adams went down hard. Both these teams have dealt with injuries. Neither team is particularly deep. Take another look. KJ's up. He's walking around. He'll be fine. One of the toughest guys in this league. Most improved a year ago. Some think he could get it again this year. One of the best athletes in this league. A great uh, cerebral IQ player. And he looks like he's ready to go. Jets wins it. Cryer with Harris on him. And those long arms of Harris. He blocks the shot. Well, you're right, John. 6-7 wingspan. And then he turns it over. Lock gets it to Cryer. Oh, wow. Cryer wide open. Back in 30 seconds. that have been playing against each other in AAU ball since the third grade. And when you talk to Jamal, he says, hey, he was the only guy, LJ was, that could hit a step back from the volleyball line. I said, what was the record between you guys? He goes, LJ beat me 15 to 1. LJ goes, I don't, I don't remember the one. <laughs> Shed looking for some help, finds Cryer off his hands. Emmanuel Sharp is a guy who bears watching. He can shoot it as well. Roberts inside, turns the corner, puts it off the glass and in. And it is all Houston here in the early going. Well, after clinching his share of the title against UCF, there is no emotional letdown. Dickinson inside, a little bit strong rebound, Roberts. John, when Cedric Lott comes out for a sub, he will get a huge ovation. He's holding the fourth down. Sharp buries it. Listen to this place. The percent in the game. A field goal percentage record in a Big 12 game. That Sonic blockbuster February 3rd meeting. And well, today, Kansas off to the cold start, and Houston red hot to begin. That one out of bounds, and it'll be Kansas basketball. Well, we talked about the injuries to uh, Houston. No Joe Tugler with Javier Francis saddled with two fouls. The seldom used lot is really banging Dickinson right now. Doing a great job. Harris slips it up. That wouldn't go. Dickinson the rebound, but the foul on Houston as Harris went down. One of the ways these teams are similar right now with all the injuries to Houston, both these teams are thin. I mean, Bill Self and Kelvin Sampson into the NCAA tournament are going to be playing mainly seven guys, max eight, I would guess. Yeah, so the good thing about the tournament is you have the, the days of rest and the long TV timeouts. It seemed like they're five-minute timeouts, John. But certainly foul trouble and injuries are a concern for both of these teams. Kelvin Sampson's team off to a 15-point advantage. Make it 14 as Harris knocks down the free throw. So Bill Self during that last time out trying to steady the waters to his team, telling him, guys, listen, this is a long game. Eventually some of your shots are going to fall, but you got to want to guard, and you have to want to fight. We're not going to be able to get back this until you start showing me some of that fight. Right now, Houston with the ball and up big. Kansas for sure. They have not been able to knock down shots. Damian Dunn, one of the seniors honored pregame, the tra transfer from Temple. Dunn pulls up, shot short. Dickinson pulls down the rebound. Adams went down. It's the second time he's gone down. And a little slow coming up the court. Dickinson not able to secure the pass. And telling Brett Smith. 
Grab my arm. All right, coming up tonight on ESPN, another Sonic blockbuster matchup. Regular season ACC conference title on the line as number seven takes on number nine. It's North Carolina at Duke, 6.30 Eastern. And of course, Carolina beating Duke on February 3rd. Both coaches have done a great job this year. Hubert Davis, my coach of the year. Well, Damian Dunn knocking down a triple. Playing time has been sporadic, coming off just a seven-minute performance against UCF, and he was scoreless in that one. Harris inside, off the window and in. And they needed that, Dewan Harris with the deuce. Well, to your point, John, Damian Dunn right now with all the injuries, He's the X factor for Houston. He's just starting to figure out Cougar basketball after transferring from Temple. Dunn puts it on the floor, hangs, and it rolls off, but Dunn will go to the line. The first practice Damian Dunn ever attended here at the University of Houston, he was kicked out. Kelvin Sampson didn't like the body language. He didn't like the fact that at Temple he was the star, could get away with things. Kelvin held his feet to the fire, and he is going to be critical the next four weeks. Dunn knocks it down. This is a Houston team. The calling card is the defense, no question. But we have seen them in bursts really score. Dunn gets the second. A 17 point advantage. Adams inside, shot blocked. And then Dickinson, twice he missed, wow. Just inside the three-point line, Dunn couldn't hit. And now Kansas back the other way, but they don't have numbers. Dickinson finds Adams for two. Nice job. They love to do that when you're fronted in the post. The opposite big fastest to the foul line. They got done. Front thing, easy basket by Adams. But this end of the court, friend, is where Bill Self was urging his team. They got to get some stops. Yeah, no question. People think like, this team is not a good offensive team. That's insane. Inside, and Malik Wilson able to clean it up and put it in. Very similar, John, in reverse to the game in Lawrence. Harris, he's been ice cold from three. His last four games coming in, one for 11 from beyond the arc. So now one for 12. Dunn will try. And Timberlake eventually pulls down the rebound. Marco Jackson here, the freshman early on of the year, was in the starting lineup. Adams inside, lost the handle. Here's Shed. Shed bursting up ahead, shot blocked. Sharp couldn't hit. Loose ball. Shed comes away with it. Look at that effort and intensity from Jamal Shed. Dunn from deep. Hey, he said, that loss is on me. You look at the rest of the guys. LJ goes for 24. Emmanuel Shaw, Jerron Roberts, they went for 11. He goes, I have to be better. I told my team, I have to be better for you guys. Well, so far, Kansas at this end of the court. Just three for 17. 
That vaunted Houston defense, arguably the top of the country. And that's a turnover out of bounds. Houston basketball, eighth turnover on Bill Self's crew. And as you saw, John, out of the timeout, Houston went to the 3-2 matchup zone. It confused Kansas, forced that turnover. Wilson gets it back to Shed. Shed who directs all the traffic for them. Feed inside. Roberts lost the handle briefly. Cryer. LJ Cryer knocks it down. He's got eight. It's his second three. See that zone with Roberts up top? Way off. Marco Jackson, the air ball from three. Shed, give back. It's unbelievable. This is an unbelievable effort. Roberts inside, now outside Malik Wilson. Reminder tomorrow on ESPN a triple header of women's conference championship games all starts with the ACC at 1 p.m. Eastern followed by the SEC championship and then the Pac-12 will finish today women's college basketball coming at you tomorrow John we've spent a lot of time in Houston this year watching this team and I was here the week after the loss at Kansas a couple days later and I asked a few of the players, and they were very humble. They got their butts kicked, but they said, March 9th, March 9th. That's all they said. 32 to 9, the score. And they get the foul on Dewan Harris. So, one of the things that this crowd likes to chant is kind of a, a question and response. So they'll say, Whose house? Coop's house. And then with the PA, when it's a possession and it's up in the air, they'll say, whose ball? Coog's ball. It has certainly been the Coog's house here today and all season long, unbeaten. I, I thought they were saying Coog's house. <laughs> I've been telling people that, but it's not true. <laughs> Untrue. Roberts inside, reverses it. He used the rim to protect himself and put it home. That's when you put the shot blocker in jail. Lock him up. Another 10-0 run. Dickinson looking for some help. Goes right hand off the glass. Not exactly a soft touch, but it goes home. Fran, you mentioned this idea earlier. When things are clicking defensively for Houston, it seems like they got seven guys on the court. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And we didn't see that the last couple of games with the lack of depth, but you see it at home today. Let's go back to Jawan Roberts and how good an offensive player he's become. Now watch. He's going to take Dickinson. Watch him go to behind the rim. This is called putting the shot blocker in jail because Dickinson cannot reach up through the rim without it being goaltending. And John, this team leads the country at 10-0 runs. They've got about 30 now this season. They already got two today. Roberts inside offensive foul. It'll go the other way. I'm guessing, and I absolutely could be wrong, but year in and year out, if you were to track the team that leads the country in 10-0 runs, it's probably going to be one of the best teams in the country every single well, year. that's true. That's true. And, you know, I think the other thing, too, most of those 10-0 runs, like Kansas, come at home. Kansas is right up there at the top also in 10-0 runs. But absolutely, the home crowd fuels those kind of efforts. Murphy used the ball fake, now needs some help. And yeah, they get a foul. Late call, Jeff Harkness gets a foul on Houston. John, I'm looking at Johnny Furphy's face. He's six for his last 30 from three. And honestly, he's had a great season for a guy who's a freshman, but he looks bewildered out there. 
When he's open, he better shoot it because they're going to need him to score like he did for about a month in January and February. Now, one of the questions with Johnny Furphy is, does he come back? You know, right now, would be considered a first-round draft pick. Yeah, he is, but he, you know, he's like Grady Dick and so many other young players. He's not going to help an NBA team next year. You love baseball, right? He's this kid in high school, throws 97, signs with Kansas, and then he signs with the Milwaukee Brewers for a big bonus. And But you're not putting that kid in the major leagues. Yep. You're not putting Johnny Furphy in an important NBA game right now, but he still may come out. Breyer, step back. What an effort on the glass. Houston to every loose ball. Cryer. And Furphy pulls down the rebound. Johnny's got to get his swag back, and he's got to just throw caution to the wind. Adams kick out. McCuller. Do you feel this way? I feel like every loose ball is 80 to 90 percent going to be a food ball. Yeah, well, that's the way it's played out, at least thus far. Good hands. McCuller knocked it away from Pryor. Now gets it to Adams. Kansas down by 21 as we close in on three to go in the first half. Murphy wide open. And he hits. That's got to feel good. He's got to just let it fly. Get back to that confidence. A little shooting slump never hurt anybody. Obviously, John, they need him to play well. Because when, they, when he plays well, their starting five is as good as anybody. Not to get too ahead of ourselves, but one of the things you got to think about is if the spread stays like this, does Bill Self think about just kind of pulling the ripcord on McCuller and saying, get some rest, and we'll see you in Kansas City? Yeah, I think so in the second half. We'll, like you said, we'll see how it plays out. Oh, I thought he got fouled. Yeah, I did too. Shed lob. Wilson the throw down. I thought Furphy got fouled, and Bill Self feels the same way. Yeah. It is all Cougars here in Houston. Dickinson got it. That's pretty good D by Lott. Hunter backed himself down. Remember, Lott's only played 28 minutes in the entire Big 12 season. He's doing a good job with Francis' foul trouble. Seconds to go here in the first half as Pryor hits sharp. Out of bounds. Kansas ball when we return. All Houston. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. Country, plenty of highlights coming your way on the Chief Halftime Report. Reese, thanks. Hello, friend. That's our colleague Jim Nance. There's Hakeem Olajuwon. I see the dream in the house. They're going to be honoring Jim Nance at halftime. Of course, longtime voice of the Final Four. Now yields to our buddy Ian Eagle. All those years doing the Masters, Super Bowls. The guy who's a pretty good golfer, his roommate. Freddie yeah, Couples. Houston, Freddie Couples. There he is. Yep. 1990, he took over as voice of the Final Four. And there you go, John. Jim's got to be pretty, pretty happy. He's gotten very close to Kelvin Sampson and his coaching staff and his players and uh, doesn't get a weekend off now with golf and NFL and certainly enjoying this great run. Johnny Furphy at the line, 103 to go in our first half. What I love about Lott right now is Dickinson does not mind throwing his weight around in this league. 
And Watt at 265 is having some fun right now. Dickinson the rebound to get the foul on Lott. Kelvin won't be happy with that. The inexperienced youngster getting a chance to go against the All-American. Cedric Lott, the redshirt freshman from the Ivory Coast. And his season high 10 minutes last Saturday against Oklahoma. He got a nice talking to by Jawan Roberts, who is essentially Mike Shedd, an assistant coach. How big a loss is Joe Tugler? It's huge. It's huge. He gave you 20 minutes a game. Same kind of production as Roberts and Francis. And uh, remember, John, at 18 years old, he was doing stuff no Houston freshman has done under Kelvin Sampson. Now, they did have a guy named Olajuwon. He was pretty good. Yeah. He was in the house here today. There's JoJo Tugler, foot surgery on Wednesday to end his season. He was initially going to have it Tuesday. Kelvin Sampson, no, no, you got to have it Wednesday so that I can be there. You were always a big one tonight and right now it looks right now at any way that Kansas is going to have to win four games in four days in Kansas City. Houston has been sensational both ends of the court here in this one lot and he gets fouled as Adams collided with him 38 19 Houston on top. Cedric Lott is that that we're not the bonus yet. Hey John Houston has held eight teams this year under 20 at the half Including two in the big 12. They have a chance to do it again Feed inside that's Roberts with two more Joan Roberts with six to go along with five rebounds It has been all Cougars Finds Adams and that one rolls off and KJ has hit the floor hard three times already in this one and Adams will go to the line a foul on Cedric Lott and a good job good job by Harris driving baseline Adams always knows where Harris is and it looks like Kelvin Sampson will go small in his final possession Adams knocks it down. On the ground will grab a seat on Marco Jackson. Checks in. KJ Adams gets them both 40 21. Cryer puts it on the floor, lost the handle. Adams gets it back. And then that one knocked away. And that is how the first half comes to a close. All Cougars 40 to 21. Let's send it over Chris Button with Kelvin Sampson. Coach, great effort on both ends of the floor. What are you most pleased with right now? Just our Well, we're ready for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. Kansas and Houston. And to Chris's point, I think some insight. McCullers starts the second half on the bench. And Jamari McDowell begins on the court for Kansas. Lob and a throwdown. And Francis with his third dunk of the game. And Bill Self may empty the bench sooner than we think. Quite frankly, I don't know how he could empty his bench. He doesn't have much. That's in terms of healthy bodies. Adams gets it inside. Dickinson wrestles it away and then overshoots the basket. Six field goals in the first half for Kansas, John, and ten turnovers.
pick ball and while we have a moment let's check out our first half stats yes yeah, six of 24 for kansas a season low 21 points at the half and a season low 26 percent field goal percentage in that first half and houston taking advantage 21 points off those 10 kansas turnovers Sharp throws it away towards us And it'll go back to Kansas now sharp wanted LJ to fill the slot where he was gonna throw it and Just a little miscommunication right there. They're talking it over LJ John. I think uh, we love watching him at Baylor He's fit in like a glove here in Houston back home Remember, Francis has two, so you could get Dickinson deep. You got a chance. Burpee with shed on him. Now Adams, shot clock's at 10. Adams hangs, and he's fouled. K.J. Adams going physical down low as they get the foul on Juwan Roberts. And K.J. took this ball right at Roberts. And this is how you have to handle physicality. You have to match it. You see, he goes right up through. Roberts chin not on purpose But certainly Roberts felt the brunt of it. Yeah, literally through his chin KJ Adams who was the most improved player in the league last year <laughs> And he's in that mix this year like some, we might give out some awards later in this half. Shed full head of steam and now puts on the brakes. And back up top. And Jabari Mac McDowell, John, back home. The freshman is from Houston. Good athlete, will be like a Marcus Garrett type in time. And he's getting a chance to play some minutes with McCullough resting right now. Well, that'd be a pretty good guy to turn into. There's a turnover yeah, back the other way. Sloppy start to the second half of the first 100 seconds or thereabouts. Kevin McCullough with that knee bruise. Yeah, starting the second half on the bench, I would say, unless Kansas really gets back into this one i think he'll stay right there if yeah. you, i guess yeah because it's looking like kansas with 14 teams in the league it's a five-day tournament they will have to win four games in four days with this bench i would not be optimistic Dickinson and they get a shove and that'll be on Francis so Javier Francis picks up his third you know, as, as McCullough continues to work through this bone bruise that he has on his knee he asked to come out of the game against BYU because he had tweaked it and then Bill he didn't practice all week Bill Self was asked by the media this week what his plan was for Kansas City in the Big 12 tournament because I thought about resting him because at this point, I'd rather him be healthy for March, but I thought about a lot. I haven't made a decision yet. Yeah, it's a very uh, interesting calculation because this Kansas team can still go deep in the NCAA tournament as long as everybody's right. Roberts, shot wouldn't fall, and then a foul inside. They get Dickinson. Yeah, I mean, when... They're right and they're healthy. They're starting five is probably as good as just about anyone. Yeah, I would say so. You know, obviously UConn is UConn's unbelievable. 42 and five since last January. But Kansas has beaten number one, number two, and number four. Sharp knocks it down for deep, and the lead is 21. Kansas has no breakdown players on the floor right now. And 
And McDowell stepped on the sideline, out of bounds, turnover. And you know, John, I've said this a couple times, and it's too early to really say this game's over. It's not. But this will never happen again to Bill Self. Uh, they will be in the portal. They have a great class coming in. They may be getting another top 25 player here soon. He will have eight or nine starters next year. At least eight or nine guys to pick from the start. This They've had some bad decisions made in recruiting, some injuries, but this is a rarity. Francis throws it down. Great ball movement by the Cougars. One of the most improved players, certainly in the Big 12 in the country. Look at that. Deflection and a steal for Javier Francis. Goodbye. Shed and one. This is a very, very unselfish team. Watch the ball movement now. Side to side, back inside. And then this is a blow-by. That's what you call a blow-by. I've been 21 years. I'm not sure I've enjoyed watching a player more. We've seen Buddy Heal, Frank Mason, George Niang, Monty Morris. You go down the list. Uh, this guy epitomizes what com com competitiveness is all about. He, he, and it's not the stats. Throw the stats out the window. Yeah, he's a competitor. He's a leader. And he's been as productive a player as they've had. Harris feeds Adams. Gets inside. Had it knocked away. And they get the foul on Francis. That's going to be his fourth, I believe. Kelvin Sampson did not like the call. And Cedric Lott is going to check in. Let's watch. We know KJ will go hard to the rim. Let's take a look right here. Oh, that's a foul. That's an easy one. Watch him come across that left arm, and that's a no-brainer. But we know how fans can be on the home court. Yeah, well, what happens is everybody focuses on the ball. Yeah. And on the ball, he, he got all ball, but he also got him across the opposite arm. Without Dickinson right now, these are good minutes for a lot. We mentioned 29 minutes in Big 12 play for the big fella. Walks up ahead. Sharp. And it is all Houston. 29 points is the advantage for the Cougars. Timberlake jumper, got it. Houston has secured the number one seed in the Big 12 tournament. They are still hoping to be the one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Shad inside. And no call as he went down hard. Harris. Timberlake and Furphy able to finish with a three. Every little bit counts. We talked about Johnny Furphy in a major shooting slump. It'll be nice to see him get some confidence here in the second half. Well, Jake Pryor going to work here. Hanks. That shot a little strong. Timberlake couldn't secure it. Prior a three. And it'll be Kansas basketball when we return. All Houston here at the Fertitta Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the new dollar 99. They've beaten number one, number two, number four. Uh, and I think they they know this. They made some they made some not good decisions in recruiting. Took a couple guys that never really ended up showing up. We know about Arterio Morris, and I, I think that'll change. He knows he's a competitor. He will not go through this again. Furphy 
That one off the mark. Sharp collects the rebound. Under 15 to go. And it is all Houston. LJ Cryer has really worked on his uh, ability to make plays with the dribble. Roberts on Adams inside rolls at home. And Jawan Roberts given the sign too small. Well, today that's probably the case. I wouldn't mind seeing this matchup at KC. Sure. Damian Dunn, I told you about that first practice. He would not have he would not have dove on the floor that first practice. You saw him get on the floor right there. Dunn straight on three. And Adams who's hit the floor a number of times in this one. at the basket flips it up wouldn't go out of bounds Kansas basketball tonight NBA Saturday primetime on ABC Jason Tatum and the Celtics take the NBA's best record of Phoenix to face Kevin Durant the Suns coverage begins at 8 Eastern NBA countdown I thought there was a chance John we might not see Hunter Dickinson anymore tonight uh, he's back out there and again, part of the reason is they do not have a lot of quality depth. Feed inside. The Cougars collapse on Dickinson, and it's a turnover. Roberts. Out of bounds, Kansas ball. Hunter got away with a little push right there, but it's in... in uh, not inconclusive, it's uh, irrelevant right now with this lead. Travel. I mean, even though Marco Jackson was a McDonald's All-American who is, you know, as a freshman just hasn't lived up to what they expected. You know, Marco Jackson was signaling at least whatever he thought the play was, and that was part of I think to him what took place yeah. in that spot. Miscommunication. Yeah. Inside Shed. And two more for Jamal Shed, who's got a dozen. Seven assists to go along with it. Dickinson. Knocks it down. That's him. Tita Center has been loud all day long. Yeah, that's important, John. Talk about Furphy. Hunter was four for 28 yeah. behind the arc. You mentioned, what was it, uh, uh, Dwan Harris, right? The three One of those for guys. 11 coming in the last four games. Yep. Not a good recipe. Done working on Furphy. Back out sharp. Shot clock under 10. Sharp hoists. And Furphy pulls down the rebound. Dickinson rolls it home. So on the Houston bench, they just held up a sign that said PG Drive. Yeah. Does that mean that it's Shed driving to the basket? Uh, you know, you're good at this. <laughs> you're good at this. Yeah. KC Beard holds up the play each time down the floor. Roberts driving that time. Dickinson had it, lost it. And Hunter Dickinson grabbing that shoulder. Yeah, he was in a lot of pain. You don't see uh, you don't see a score like this very often when Kansas is playing. It's probably unlikely that we see Hunter Dickinson again. Kevin McCuller has not played here in the second half. They just got to regroup and get healthy.
Nice cut, but miscommunication. Good job by Wilson of cutting to the basket. Jeff Harkness grabbing the ball, Kansas to inbound. So it's you know, Marco Jackson, Johnny Furphy, Jamari McDowell, Nick Timberlake, and Parker Brown for Kansas. Feet inside, Brown with two. Good look by Furphy. Johnny Furphy, this is a good opportunity the last 10 minutes to kind of be the go to guy yeah. on this team, right? Get some confidence back. I know he's going to be a first round pick. And he'll make a lot of money, by the way, but he'll spend a lot of time in the G League next year. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's triple A baseball. Sure. You're, you know all about that. If he did come back, the NIL situation is probably good. And he would absolutely be a candidate to be a first-team All-American. Yeah, you got to figure that there'd be some uh, some cash waiting for him. Yep. New normal. Fryer feeds lot, lost it. Timberlake has it, and now Kansas the other way, down 21, 10 to go. And this one has been. All Cougars. And that was way off the mark for Parker Brown. Shed inside. Draws the contact to Jamal Shed. Will go to the line and shoot two. It's been praising how well Jamal Shedd has played over the last several years, but it wasn't always like that when he came in his freshman year. He got this tattooed onto his forearm. It says, this success requires patience. It was the patience. It's the quote that assistant coach Quantus White and him would talk about during his freshman year, a year where he averaged less than 10 minutes a game. He only started two games. When you talk to Kelvin Sampson, he said, listen, he was a guy freshman year. He would just give excuse after excuse. He's built into maybe one of his favorite players he's ever coached. And, and to add to that, Chris, great point. Jamal said, I've known this coaching staff for seven years. They started recruiting me as a freshman. So even though I was a little, I can't even say it, uh, bleep when I was a freshman I always trusted that they had my back because they'd known me for, for so long. They believed in him before any other school did. Brad Priscilla travels with his own bleep machine. <laughs> well done. Yeah, Jamal Shedd, it's really been impressive to watch the development and I asked him, when's the last time you forgot to play on the court in practice or in a game? And he shook his head and he said, nope, I knew the playbook from the first day I got here and even some of the plays that they used to run that he'll weave back in, I remember. Yeah, he, he's the only player I can remember in a long time that literally the coaching staff could leave for a week and he could coach the team. And he would have the respect of every player. He knows the plays. He's also not afraid to tell Kelvin Sampson if they're running the wrong play. He told us a story about his sophomore year. Kelvin was in the huddle. He draws something up on the whiteboard. He's like, that's the wrong play, but I didn't say anything. And then we went out to run it, and we ran the wrong play. Wow. And Kelvin looks at him, and he goes, what are you doing? He said, you threw it up that way. He said, next time, tell me I'm wrong. So now Jamal Shep's got enough kind of credit with his team to be able to go into a huddle and say, coach, that's not how it is. Yeah, he lets Jamal Shedd correct him, and he says he just wants somebody to be right. He doesn't care who it is. Everything going right today, Damian Dunn. Bang. You know, if a 22-year-old could have the 68-year-old wisdom of a Kelvin Sampson and put it into his brain, that is Jamal Shedd. They are tied at the hip. Javier Francis done with five and finishes with eight points.
Timberlake coming off a terrific senior night and trying to add to it here. He could be an X factor for Kansas next week. Well, as far as the storyline in this one with just under eight and a half to go, you said it earlier, Fran. This one played out very similarly to the way the February 3rd game did in Lawrence, where Kansas came out, punched Houston right in the mouth, and the Cougars never recovered. Same story today. Houston doing the punching, and the Jayhawks. Wow. Cryer knocks it down. It is all Houston. Done. Roberts with the rejection. Houston the other way. Cryer off balance. And Cryer pulls down the rebound. Dunn draws the cut. Calling that one. Our game here, it's been all Houston. The number one team in the country has looked like exactly that. Yeah. The number one team in the country. Yep, yeah, but as I look towards tonight, I see two great coaches here. Phil Self in the Hall of Fame. Kelvin Sampson likely to be someday. And I mentioned the two young coaches at Duke and Carolina, John. They, you're allowed to improve as a coach. You know what I mean? John Shire to caught some heat last year. Hubert had the off year this year. He's been sensational But you think of Scott Drew Jay Wright guys like that Bill Self once lost 18 straight games Coaches are allowed to improve too, and I like both of the futures of those two coaches Timberlake trying to feed Brown turnover back the other way All Houston from the Fertitta Center. Houston does not have a lot of depth. If I'm Jamal Shedd, I just spray the ball around and make sure I don't get hurt before I come out of this game one last time in here. Roberts gets the offensive rebound. Shedd. And Timberlake pulls down the board. McDowell back the other way. Get the bump on Sharp. What'd you think? Oh, it's a good call. Uh, that was definitely a block. He wasn't set. I wasn't even listening to this crowd in here who thought it wasn't. That was an easy call. About Dylan Wilhite in the game right now. Yeah, get some minutes. Yep, walk on from San Diego. He's been a, his family's been a part of this Kansas program for a long time. There you Marco go. Marco Jackson knocks it down. Wilhite wearing number 22. Good practice player because he's got good size and can bang every day. Kick out sharp. Timberlake finally gets it. Now Will Height. And Kansas will set it up. Well, Marco Jackson with two more. John, he hasn't been playing basketball in a long time. He's a lacrosse player. If he would stay with it in this program, I think he's going to be very, very good. He's got a little bit of Malik Newman in him. And I think he could be a point guard. But it's a process. Murphy comes up with the deflection. We close in on five to go. It's Houston by 23. Wilson up ahead. And the throwdown. The senior gets the dunk. The senior day festivities started about 2.30.
local time. And it's been a celebration all afternoon long for the guys and the fans in red. Most of these seniors today can all return next year. I would expect Jamal Shedd to be off to the NBA. But don't be surprised if some of these seniors are back for year five. Roberts down to the floor. And Malik Wilson's one of those guys who could very well be back. He's See the athleticism right here. The Texas Tech transfer is just starting to come into his own as their sixth man right now with all those injuries. How about Jawan Roberts can return next year, John? Damian Dunn can return. You know the one guy who's going to be impossible to replace, and that's Shed. Kellen Sampson, the associate head coach, coach in waiting, said to us about a month ago, I have no idea where we are going to go to find somebody to replace this guy. Now, there's Kellen. If if you decide to come back, yep. Do they? You have to give back the frame jersey. Do you get two of them? You get two you of them. Two for one. Well, speaking of which, Ryan Elvin checking in. He got the start, and they love him. Well, and when they introduced him. For senior day, they started chanting what they normally do at the end of a game. We want Elvin. You know, he was recruited to be a preferred walk-on. And he's one of the most popular players in his program. He's, he's, he's a great shooter. He's made 10 threes in his career. Elvin deflects it to Shed. Kansas with a season high 18 turnovers. We talk about Fryer and uh, Shed. Elvin and Shed are two Austin kids who used to work out together in high school. Elvin way downtown. This place would come unglued. Timberlake. I would take a timeout right now if I were Kelvin, and I would get Shed a, 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 the ovation he deserves. They may wait for the TV timeout. And they will try to get Elvin a shot. Well, the crowd is chanting for him. And he's got good range, so. And they get the shove on Timberlake. Break of the action here from the Fertitta Center. 69. For he was saying Boog's house. Boog's house. <laughs> and here is Ryan Elvin. <laughs> Birthday person, what do you have to say? Well, Galvin Sampson was raving about Ryan Elvin this week, not just as a player, but he told him, he said, I want you to be a coach one day, and I believe in you so much that when you come to me and you say, that's what I want to do, there'll be a spot on my bench and my staff for you. Wow, that's wonderful. He committed to Houston before Shed did, and they were friends. Wilder Evers handling the ball here. Timberlake. Celebration will now begin. It says it all right there. The senior grabbing a seat, gets the hug and the kiss from the coach. Wait till the next one.
Evers swings at McDowell. Call timeout, I think. Nope. Elvin. Ryan Elvin, a hero to most here at the Fertitta Center. Austin in the house. Shed the likely player of the year in the conference, and he is today's player of the game. Brought to you by Phillips 66. 13, 8, and 6. He got everybody involved. And again, will likely be the conference player of the year. You know, when you think about the history of this program, it starts with Elvin Hayes. They end up with this guy. Brian Elvin. Yeah. I'm telling you, the man can hoop. Nice move, Bears. Evers got that to go. But John, think about it. Elvin Hayes and Don Chaney. Five slam a jamma. Some of the great players that played here under Kelvin. But Shed is in that pantheon without a doubt. Elvin. <laughs> Emmanuel Sharp is using body language, hoping that would go. Locked with the rejection. Good hustle. Good job, Jamari. Evers will try. Again, coming up 6.30 Eastern, it's number seven, North Carolina, at number nine, Duke. Right here, the number one team in the country, the Houston Cougars. Their final home game of the regular year. And they win them all. Jamal Shed, that smile, says it all. From start to finish, it was the Cougs' house all day long, 76-46 the final.